My name is Tim Sutherland. I'm a visiting lecturer at York University studying battlefield archaeology. And on which project do you work at the moment? Uh, at the moment I'm working on a couple of key projects, uh, the larger scale uh, events. One is the Battle of Towton, dating from 1461, and the other is another medieval battlefield dating from uh, 1415, the Battle of Agincourt in France. It's very difficult to detect this battles of the medieval time, and it's much easier to found this relatively modern battles like Lützen. What is the reason? It's basically down to the type of artifacts we're looking for. When we're into the post-medieval period, we are starting to look for munitions, lead balls, artifacts that are made of a denser material. When you're into the earlier medieval period and, and even earlier than that, uh, generally speaking, the artillery is uh, arrowheads which are made of ferrous metal, which of course rust, and of course they almost disappear. At Towton we're very lucky in that we found uh, over 350 now of these medieval arrowheads, but most of those have decayed quite badly, and so their ma uh, magnetic or uh, signal from a metal detector is so weak that they're so difficult to record and find that when you come to a post-medieval battlefield it's, it's so much easier. <laughs> And what about Towton? What, what do you have found in Towton? We've been so fortunate at Towton in that uh, we started off basically with one of the best finds we've ever had and that was in 1996 we were lucky enough to, uh, to record half of a mass grave from the combatants from the battle and that was in 1996 so it's 15 years ago now and Subsequently, after we've recorded that, I set up uh, one of the first uh, multidisciplinary uh, battlefield archaeology projects in Britain, and we took on the, 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 the project of looking for the battlefield that this mass grave had been as, 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 resu as resulted from. And so we were trying to find the archaeological signature of the battle itself. Now, of course, this is not lead musket balls or shot or cannonballs, some things that you can find quite easily. These are the very uh, it's ephem ephemeral uh, artefacts. So we're looking for the arrowheads, but also the artefacts of clothing that you and I would wear. So the buttons and buckles and the end of straps, things that used to tie their laces together with. And so all these things are minute in the great scheme of things. And so trying to find them is very difficult, but also they're made of either iron or copper alloy, and that doesn't produce, generally speaking, as good a signal as something like lead, which is a very dense metal. What we can learn from a battlefield like Towton? What, is, what are the new results? You know? What does we know more than from history sources? Uh, well, I've looked at all the historical sources from the, the day after the battle, basically, and that told a distinctive story of how the battlefield, how the battle was fought over a, a, a large uh, stretch of land and over a, quite a long period of time, over a whole day. And basically what we wanted to do was find out how the artefact signature fell into that visual image of, 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 the, of the historical sources had told us. So we looked at the, uh, the artefacts, the scatters, and it started to suggest that the historical sources weren't, uh, or rather the modern interpretation of the historical sources wasn't exactly as it should have been. And so what I've done is I've applied the archaeology to look at what the primary historical sources have told us and it matches up quite well and it's not what modern historians have told us uh, uh, their interpretation of battle seems to be wrong so basically what it's doing is it's literally rewriting history in terms of how we perceive the battle of Towton. and so in that respect battlefield archaeology is incredibly valuable valuable what happened in the battle of Towton? What are your results? What can you say from the Musgrave and from the arrowheads? Well, the, the arrowheads are, are vitally important because there's a distribution of them across the battlefield, almost in a, in a single line, but spread over a few metres. And this is spread right across the battlefield. And it shows us almost certainly where the battle began, because in a medieval conflict, as in with a lot of other conflicts, uh, the battle uh, lines are only formally engaged at the beginning of the battle and subsequently they start to move around and then break up and fragment and so we think we know now where these arrowheads have been found where the battle started and that also coincides exactly with where we found the mass graves in the center of the battlefield and so the arrowheads uh, have 
provided us a key into showing us where the battle started and of course the mass graves of these individuals that were killed during the initial part of the battle of where they fell is where they were buried and so this tells us exactly where the battle actually ended for these individuals. So we've got the beginning and the end to a certain degree. And then of course the battle expands around them where it was fought over a period of time. And so what we can do is we can see how the battle progressed from the beginning almost to the end. Azincourt was one of the most important battles in medieval time. And uh, England, for England, yes, in, in, the, in the Hundred Year War. and. What do you found at, at, at this place? Well, that's quite interesting in that we again looked at the historical sources. Then we went into the landscape and we wanted to apply the, the, the discipline of battlefield archaeology to look for the physical evidence of the battle. And everywhere we went, we couldn't find any. And that's very important because sometimes when you apply battlefield archaeology, you don't come up with the results, which is almost as important as when you do come up with the results. Because if you can't find any evidence of battle, then you, of course you have to explain, are you in the right place for a start? Subsequently, over the years we've been working at Agincourt, we were even allowed into the enclosure that formally identified where the graves were where the battlefield mass graves had been located, where the dead were buried. And we subsequently did some excavations there and there's no evidence whatsoever of the dead within this enclosure. And so of course now we have to ask the questions, are we in the right place at all? Have we somehow missed the archaeological data? Uh, is there another way of interpreting the archaeological evidence and therefore the historical evidence? And so at the moment, there is very little evidence of the Battle of Agincourt. Now this is how we started out at Towton. We wiped all the, or a lot of the pseudo-history of the Battle of Towton off the map. And so we, then we, of course, we had to rewrite it. So by, by applying archaeo archaeological, the archaeological discipline, First of all, you compare it to the history and then you find out that it didn't work. And then you apply the archaeology and then you realise that you've changed it all. And this is one of the processes we're going through at the moment at Agincourt. But at the moment, we have not found any physical evidence of the Battle of Agincourt at all in its correct, what is perceived to be the correct location. So this monument, which is there, it's a construction for the memory. Yes. And that's important on a lot of battlefields because of course it's the memory of the event that is still important to a lot of people. And so memorialising a battlefield is important, but of course what is being memorialised? Is it a concept that doesn't physically exist? Is the battlefield somewhere else? In which case, why has the memorial been placed in that location? Is it a key spot? Is it where the mass graves are for, uh, uh, were, uh, were uh, excavated? We don't know. And so the memorialization, the past, or sorry, the, the, the post-battle uh, evidence is, is just as important as the evidence of the battle itself. So battlefield archaeology doesn't just look at the evidence of the battle. It can look at the evidence of what happened after the battle, how people treated the dead, how they memorialized the events. And of course, when you come to Lutzen, we have a, a fantastic chapel to help memorialise the battlefield at Lutzen. We have the stone commemorating Gustav Adolf. Uh, but how relevant are these to this exact location? We don't know exactly why. And so that one of the, the, the good questions to ask would be, why is that stone there? Why is this chapel here? And until we get the whole picture about the whole of the battlefield, we don't know where this sits in the landscape. And so hopefully one day there will be so much evidence uh, compiled about the Battle of Lutzen, that then we will be able to say, right, this battlefield memorial is in the middle of the battlefield, or it's on the edge, or whatever. And that's one way of interpreting it. Memorializing such a battlefield could be also a problem. Imagine this famous battlefield of the Amselfeld in Serbia, you know. It's, uh, 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 they used it for really, yeah, they used it in a really bad political way, as, uh, uh, a memory of, of, of uh, the heroes of the Serbian, uh, uh, of the Serbs, and uh, it plays, so actually this battlefield plays a role in this uh, modern conflict in Yugoslavia. Yes, and that is one of the key <coughs> roles I see as, of battlefield archaeology. You can have the history, you can have the stories, you can have the memories, but what you need is the physical 
factual data. It's applying a forensic application to a problem and therefore you need factual data, you need real evidence. Just like in a police case, if you could walk into a police court and say, I have heard this, this evidence of, suggests this, this person has said that they seem to remember such and such a thing. What you need is the physical evidence to tie that location down, what happened in that location. That's very important. What people will interpret from that evidence will always be a problem, potentially. But it's a factual evidence that it is based upon. And of course, if that suggests one thing, and it heavily suggests one thing, it is difficult then to try to misinterpret that data. And without any of this physical evidence, anybody's opinion is valid, and that is the problem. So the factual data ties it to a, a key time, a key place, uh, a key interpretation. What do you think about this Lutzen project? I think it's, one, it's fascinating. Uh, two, I think it's quite important in that it's, it's difficult uh, to conceive of a project that would, that would attract so many international interests. It's important because it's the application of battlefield archaeology to a very large battlefield, but covering it hopefully 100% of a sample, which is very unusual. Usually you have only the time or the money to do a very small area. You might sample the whole battlefield by doing transect at every certain uh, in, uh, uh, in space. But it's very rarely do you get the chance to actually cover everything. In which case, the, the, the data from one side should be directly comparable to the data from another side. And if you're covering 100% of it, then of course you're getting pinpoints of accurate data all the way across it, rather than just lines where, which are open to a certain amount of interpretation. And in that respect, at the moment, it's, I think it's unique, uh, but also it, it attracts people like myself and my colleagues to this project because it means that it is a seriously uh, valued project. And that's why we want to be involved, because we see it as one of the ways forward. What are your plans in the future? <sighs> there, are, there, are, there are lots of things we would like to do. At the moment, I'm concentrating on a forthcoming excavation of one of the mass graves at Taunton. Uh, we have plans this summer to, um, to formally uncover the topsoil from a whole area so that we can see exactly how many of these graves are in this location. We know exactly they are there. We've uh, excavated a small test pit to look inside one of them. And now we need to know how many of the graves are, to what extent they are, how big they are, uh, and then eventually we would like to excavate one of them to, to get a comparable sample of, of what might be in the rest of them. Uh, and therefore we'd like to protect them uh, as uh, a monument in its own right. Of course these are where the people fell, these are where the people are buried. And so we would like to memorialise that in itself as part of the battle. That is what the battle is all about. It's about the people that lived and died on these sites. What can we learn from the anthropology of such a mass grave? It's almost limitless, but obviously at a personal level you can look at the height of an individual, you can look at their stature, were they diseased, the state of their health. And so basically you get a, a, an approximation of the, the health and size and state and, uh, of, of the individual that took part in the battle. But in terms of battle itself, of course, most uh, skeletal remains of the, of the people who took part in the battle are covered in trauma. At Towton is a very good example. Their, their heads are just cut, uh, have severe head trauma in terms of the cuts and the blunt force trauma from maces and stab wounds. And so you can see how these individual dies, uh, individuals died. And on a personal level, sometimes they were just killed with one blow to the head and they went down and they were that was it. But others had one individual, for example, had 14 wounds to the head. And so he was not killed instantly, he died a horrible death. And so it, it, it allows you a very small insight into the type of warfare, the type of brutality that took place on that site at that time, in that minute, the second that he died. And that's, it's got to be unique, it's got to be so important. It brings the people back to life, but also it tells you how they lived and died, basically. What about the future of the battlefield archaeology? And what about the public interest in England? The interest is increasing. I've just started a, uh, an undergraduate module in battlefield archaeology at York University. 
and it was it was surprising that uh, it was brought in as a, a last minute um, uh, example of, of, of something that should be done because somebody else fell sick. I was brought in and almost as a standby and we put the uh, we formed the course and we put it out to the students who would like to do battlefield archaeology and the module was completely oversubscribed straight away and so all these students either liked the idea of it or they thought it was a soft option something easy and, and, and interesting to do but by the feedback that we've got uh, after we've done the course is that they they seem to get something out of it so the, the future looks bright for battlefield archaeology it looks as though it's becoming more popular more people find it interesting and it covers such a vast array of disciplines in it within itself from the geophysical survey to the mass graves the anthropology of the people that fought there the artifacts the type of artifacts the weapons this covers such a vast uh, sort of space of, of things going on that it, it, it appeals to so many people. And so it's, I think it's only a positive move forward in terms of its interest and how we can view our history. What do you think about the necessity of protection of battlefields? And which battlefield should be protected? I think it's vitally important to protect battlefields because we're only just beginning to see the resource for what it is. And now, hopefully, we're not too late to protect a lot of these key sites. And by applying battlefield archaeological principles, we can start to investigate. And if it's not too late, and some, to, for some sites, unfortunately, it appears to be, a lot of that resource has now gone. So to apply not only the discipline of recovering the evidence, but hopefully trying to record and protect what is still there. And so at the moment, for, in England, for example, there is no statutory protection of historic battlefields. And that's something we're fighting for, uh, my colleagues and I as a group of individuals, trying to force the government to say, these are valuable sites, they're valuable sites for this reason, they're an interesting and a valuable educational resource, also as a heritage resource, people do want to come to visit them. And so we could say they're, they're important for a, a, a lot of reasons and just to allow them to fade away and become pit clean by random metal detecting or development is it would be a shame really when we're just now seeing it for what it is. Thank you very much. Thank you Harold.